Thank you for joining us. I'm your campus news host, Emma Hurley. And I'm your entertainment news host, Rachel Mangan. Welcome back and thank you for watching The Buzz. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. <laughs> if you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. On Tuesday, January 29th, Waynesburg students got their creative juices flowing and fueled while painting and sipping their coffee at the Biscuit Brew. And this was held in the Beehive. Ian Popovich was there to capture the fun. Students gathered last Tuesday the 29th when the Beehive hosted a Biscuit Brew. Students came to relax and have fun painting sculptures, cups, and other figurines while also enjoying a cup of free coffee. The theme for the Biscuit Brew event was all about this upcoming Valentine's Day, and each of the different sculptures had a nice tribute to the holiday. Students, as I said, enjoyed free coffee while they painted, and it was offered by the Starbucks kiosk in the Beehive. This is just one of the many Biscuit Brews that happen on campus, so if you did miss this one, there's one coming around again soon enough. I'm Ian Popovich, reporting for WCTV, Channel 14 News. Plummeting temperatures didn't stop students from getting to the Benetton Dining Hall for sushi night on Wednesday, January 30th. Nothing better than braving the cold and sushi self-rolled. Lindsay Stinger has more. Last Wednesday night, Waynesburg University students pulled themselves out of their dorm rooms and tried their hand at the ancient Japanese tradition, sushi rolling. The sushi chef showed the students a step-by-step -step on how to create their sacred Japanese cuisine. The role of choice was the simple yet tasty California roll. The students were taught how to roll the rice out, place avocado, crab meat, and cucumber inside it, and top it off with a seaweed wrap. The students may not be the next great sushi chef, but they did leave knowing a little bit more about some great food and a new culture. 
There's nothing more trademark than wings on a Saturday night. Students enjoyed dinner and a show as Nellie's Echo performed in the Beehive on Saturday, February 2nd. Sam Hickson was there to cover the event. It was another wing night at the Beehive with a rather familiar musical guest. The Student Activities Board served three different types of wings, and people came by the dozen to enjoy Nellie's Echo, who performed some covers from artists like Jason Mraz and John Mayer. Nellie's Echo is based out of Baltimore, Maryland, and since 2009 they have performed at over 500 colleges, including Waynesburg, multiple times. My name is Nelson Rigo by Nellie's Echo. Please, 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 do not be too cool for school. Enjoy yourself. Sing along. If you can't sing, clap your hands. If you can't clap your hands, stomp your feet. If you can't stomp your feet, I'll pray for you. All right, here we go. For WCTV News, I'm Sam Hickson reporting. Students gathered for more of what they can never seem to get enough of, coffee. They sipped and enjoyed music from Soldiers and Sons in the Beehive this past Thursday, February 7th. Ian Popovich has more on the event. Waynesburg University students had a relaxing time in the Beehive with coffee and music. The annual coffee house is a nice time for students to sit down, do some work, and enjoy a piping hot or ice cold cup of coffee. The students enjoyed performances by Soldier and Son, a brother band who were also Waynesburg residences. The band was glad to perform for the students and was just a positive experience for everyone. The Students' Activities Board, who hosted the event, had many different types of coffee and flavorings, along with simple snacks like different types of cookies. This is a common event on campus, and if you missed this one, Look forward to the next one coming in the near future. I'm Ian Popovich reporting for WCTV Channel 14 News. And that's all for Campus News. When we return, Rachel Mangan will have your entertainment report. You're watching The Buzz. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! <laughs> Got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The bear is cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Welcome back to The Buzz. I'm Rachel Mangan with your entertainment news. And to kick things off, we're going to talk about the SAGs. At the Screen Actors Guild Awards, the stars of Hollywood recognize those who passed away over the last year, paying tribute to the many talented people who have since left us. But many people were surprised and quite frankly angered when they noticed a departed Marvel legend was left out of the celebration. During the In Memoriam video tribute, icons like Aretha Franklin, Burt Reynolds, and Penny Marshall were honored for their contributions to film. But Stan Lee, the man who helped put Marvel Comics on the map and was honored through countless cameos as they dominated the film industry, was nowhere to be found, which is sad to hear of the late father of superheroes.
News in the video game industry has shown that the first wave of reviews for Kingdom Hearts 3 have just dropped. Thankfully, the early consensus is that the long-awaited installment largely lives up to the hype, delivering a crowd-pleasing experience with some of the wildest gameplay in the incredibly confusing franchise. Most reviews have presented a few caveats with regard to its narrative, but we all know how horribly confusing the storylines in the franchise are. But if you're a huge fan of the previous Kingdom Hearts games, it appears the third one is worthy conclusion to the trilogy. In movie news, Ben Affleck is officially hanging up the cape. Per multiple reports, the 46-year-old actor who played the crime fighter in Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice, Suicide Squad, and Justice League will not reprise his role in next year's The Batman. Affleck seemed to confirm the news in a tweet Thursday morning saying, quote, excited for hashtag The Batman in summer 2021 and to see Matt Reeves' vision come to life, end quote. Reeves has not announced who the new Batman will be. Fox renewed The Masked Singer for a second season on Wednesday following what's been viral success for the show. The Masked Singer is reportedly this TV season's highest rated new series and ranks among the top broadcasts across all networks. If you haven't watched any of the show yet, it doesn't take much to get hooked and you'll find yourself grasping at straws in frustration because who is the peacock? That's all for entertainment news. When we come back, Emma and I will discuss the topics you just heard. Stay tuned, you're watching The Buzz. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. All right, you ready for some baseball trivia? Let's do it. What year produced the most no-hit games in the big leagues? Seven no-hitters in 1990. Wow, that's right. Now a question that's not trivial. How many children will witness bullying this year? Huh. Uh, the answer? Three out of four. 75 percent? That's wow. right. How many of them will say something? Kids want to help, but don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. AARP.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who once took care of you. Welcome back to The Buzz. Now we'll discuss the entertainment topics that you just heard about. We're going to kick it off by starting about the SAGs. Stan Lee, not mentioned. Lots of people are mad. And there's like a lot of, a lot of disappointment just about the show in general. So, yeah, frankly, I mean, that's pretty disappointing. Stan Lee wasn't even brought up. Did they forget? Like, <laughs> See, I don't know how they can forget because you have to take into consideration that Black Panther cleaned house at the yeah. SAGs. Mm -hmm. And he was the mastermind behind it all. So how can you leave out Stan Lee, especially when you have this huge video story and you have basically everyone else. And I think Stan Lee was probably the biggest celebrity death of the year. Yeah. I mean, not like Aretha Franklin was a big one, Burt Reynolds, but you just have to think like Stan Lee has been in the industry for so long and you knew you like you knew he would have to pass eventually but I think especially there at the end he had so many negative news stories with a lot of questions mm -hmm. of like what was going on and for him to be left out of something so prestigious I think was just to make everything worse yeah it was just like huge like 
Black Panther was such a good, big part of the show, and Stanley's death was such a big part of like the media, everything. It was such like the talk of the time, and just for them to like completely leave that out doesn't make any sense to me. Like I don't even understand. That would be like leaving Betty White out. Like you can't, yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> That's another icon there, I and I think. Nothing there would be the same level of uproar if something like that were to happen. But mm -hmm. I think, too, because he was so old and he was so iconic, and I don't want to say it came as a surprise because he was in his 90s, but it was one of the things where it was like there wasn't like, oh, Stanley is hospitalized, Stanley's not doing well stories, yeah. kind of like they had with Carrie Fisher. That's like true. It was just like breaking news, Stan Lee passed away. Right. Yeah, there was a lot of um, just disappointment overall. Like, A Star is Born didn't get anything. I didn't see that myself, but I did hear tons of good feedback from it. Have you seen, did you see that? Movie? I have not saw it yet. I plan on doing it once it goes out onto like DVD mm -hmm. or on Netflix or something because I don't have the time right now to go see the, like into movies all the time. But now we have, yeah, up, the next about. Marvel movie is um, Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. And I believe this will be Stanley's last cameo, and it'll be now after he's passed. So yeah, I think I'm I hoping that maybe Disney will do something really special for him at the end mm -hmm. of Captain Marvel or um, Avengers Endgame 2. That'll be the last yes. movie that he's in. So moving on to the new release of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, you said this was kind of a very complex like plot kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not super familiar with the game, so it kind of, I'm getting vibes. Have you ever seen the show Once Upon a Time? Yes. So I'm kind of getting vibes with that because I tried to watch that and I was super confused at first. So I feel like if I sat down to play this game, I'd be super confused, but I could probably get into it, especially it's Disney. See, the difference with watching Once Upon a Time and playing Kingdom Hearts, though, is at the end of every kind of season, like there is a cliffhanger, uh -huh. but you also get um, a sense of closure to whatever main storyline played out throughout once upon a time, with Kingdom Hearts, you're just all over the place because they made the games out of order. Uh -huh. So there's like the first one, some sort of in-between type storyline, the second one, a prequel, and you're jumping all over the place. And the games are really hard and confusing anyway. So yeah. then when you take the time to sit there and try to figure out what is actually happening, it's really, really, really complex. So I've watched a couple YouTube videos to try and make sense of what's happening. And even then, it's just like they're hour-long YouTube videos because there's so much to it. Mm -hmm. Now, they're saying that three is supposed to kind of wrap things up into a bow. I don't honestly believe them on that <laughs> because it's been so sporadic throughout the franchise. But it's such a neat animation style, and you have all of these Disney characters and then um, the keys and everything and the way that it all fits together it's very um almost in a way how marvel puts together like comic storylines into the movie but they leave other stuff out it's sort of like that where you have to pay really 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 close attention to what's mm -hmm. happening and if you miss something like the way the game is set up you like wander around through the storyline but if you miss something then you're stuck and you're like Oh gosh, like where did I miss this piece? Where is it? And then you just kind of wander mm -hmm. around for a while and then usually I get mad and Google it because I don't want to spend weeks trying to find this piece that I missed before I can move on to the next part. Yeah, that's what I think like, probably makes it so captivating too. It's not like you're just going to sit down and play a race of Mario Kart. It's like, okay, you're you're in this. You're in this story. And then they put all the like classic characters in there mm -hmm. too. And so. it's like... It's the never-ending story of side quests. Like, that's the issue that I have with playing Zelda is for you to get the fully immersive storyline, you have to complete the side quests because especially with the new ones, um, the newest Zelda, like, you, you're looking for pieces of your memory in Breath of the Wild. So, like, you can finish the big fight with Ganon, but then the story doesn't get wrapped up because you don't have your memories. Yeah. And that's kind of how Kingdom Hearts is. You have to complete all the side quests and get all the pieces for you to really understand the ending. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, the good news is, so far, the third one has had good report. So those people who are invested are, they're getting a good... Um, they're getting a good feel for it. Yeah. So that's good. That's good news. Um, moving on. So Ben Affleck, right? He... Is no, no longer, no longer, Batman. no longer playing Batman. Thank goodness. No offense to the guy, but he was a terrible Batman. I couldn't take you him seriously. So? Yeah. Like I loved him in The Accountant. He was great, but the whole time I was watching The Accountant, I was just sitting and I was like, "Oh, this is Ben Affleck's Batman." Mm -hmm. And I think part of it's like he just wasn't given the good Batman movies too. 
Yeah, because the Dark Knight and all that was mm -hmm. so much better. They were better wrote down. Like, the scripts were better. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't help but I'm partial to Marvel. Mm -hmm. So whenever I watch a DC movie, I'm usually disappointed because I'm comparing it to how great I think Marvel is. So I am right. biased in that regard. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like... Considering the content he was given, considering the movie he was given, I think he did, like, I wouldn't say he did amazing. Like, I think he did a fine job. I think he's pretty all right. But do you have any any idea on who is going to play Batman in this next one? So there's a bunch of rumors that there, there's a list of people that they're hoping that they can get to audition for the role. Mm -hmm. But the one that caught my eye the most was um, they, they're interested in seeing Robbie Amell okay. play Batman. And the reason that interests me is his older brother, Stephen Amell, plays um, Arrow in the Arrowverse, which is also connected with all the DC stuff. And by the way, like, why are DC movies so bad? Because their TV shows are phenomenal. <laughs> like, I love Arrow. I love The Flash. And then there's their movies. But that's beside the point. Yeah. So you already have kind of like a family tie to the franchise. And um, Robbie Amell being the younger brother... I think he fits that kind of superhero look where he's young, he's strong, he's charismatic, which is all the things that you would sort of expect from Batman. And Ben Affleck was just so dorky. Yeah. Where, like, I wasn't, I was, you're not afraid of Ben Affleck. You want to be kind of menacing mm -hmm. when you're going to you be a guy. You want the dark knight. <laughs> yeah, you want the dark knight, not the dorky knight. Mm -hmm. So what else has he been seen in before? The one who you think is So be? Robbie Amell was in one of the Scooby-Doo's. Um, he played Fred. Okay. And then he was in, it's the movie where the girl, it's the Duff, that's what it's called. He was the, um, like, one of the main characters mm -hmm. in the Duff. So he's really strong in comedy. Mm. But so this will be different then. This will be a different <laughs> approach for him. But I think it could help lighten up DC to have someone who's a little bit more comedic. Yeah. Because a lot of their movies are so dark. And they did have some comedy in um, Wonder Woman with Chris Pine. And I think that gave it, that movie a whole different dynamic compared to everything else in the DC universe. And I think that's why um, Wonder Woman has been my favorite movie to this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, girl power. Um, so moving on to The Masked Singer. So I actually hadn't heard of this show, but I was starting to like look into it and look it up a little bit. And I'm a big America's Got Talent fan, so I go, oh, so this is where Nick Cannon went because I love him, but he's not hosting America's Got Talent anymore. But... Um, yeah, no, so I started, like, watching clips of it, so, like, it's, like, oh, I'm, like, so invested it's, in it in two it's seconds. It's infuriating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you no more think you have it figured out, and you're, like, oh, that's definitely who this is. Uh -huh. And then they th they throw a new, like, hint package, and you're, like, wait a minute. Well, that doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Because, like, Antonio Brown was super easy, and I think... That was partially because being a Pittsburgh fan, it's just like, okay, like I got the whole $10,000 thing and right. the, the dancing. Terry Bradshaw's was a little bit more difficult because of the horse joke. Like he really did a good job of throwing everyone off into thinking he was Peyton Manning. And for the record, I would have been really enthused if it would have been Peyton Manning just because of him doing the nationwide commercials with Brad Paisley. Yeah. We're like, oh, so Peyton Manning does sing. <laughs> but I had to laugh because when they unmasked Terry Bradshaw, the thing that gave it away to Robin Thicke was when he laughed. He does, like, this thing oh. with his shoulders. Like, he laughs with his shoulders. And he's like, oh, that's a Terry Bradshaw thing. And it's like, you know what? You're right. And then they pulled it off. Yeah. Um, but I think it's funny, too, that the first two people, well, three people to go, two of them were athletes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's I think like, it's so funny. Like, them singing, it's like, what? <laughs> but I have conspiracy theories now. I'm really invested. I'm sure. And yeah. the one that is driving me absolutely nuts is the peacock because they I said know they were more. friends with Michael Jackson, right? And that's the hint that's confusing me because he sounds like it might be Jonathan Groff from oh. Hamilton and Glee. Oh. So he was the king in Hamilton, uh -huh. and he was um, the Broadway guy who played um, Rachel Berry's boyfriend, and then she ended up yeah. marrying him at the end. And I'm like, he's pretty young though, isn't he? That's the thing. So he's I'm young. thinking, like, if but they're friends he, with Michael Jackson, I would assume they'd be older. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's that that's the hint that's throwing me off. Is I'm like, who could be older? Yeah. And do all of this? Has the Peacock performed? The Peacock has performed twice now. Okay. Um, and that's one of my favorite characters. 
I think the one that's driving me nuts, though, is the alien. Because initially I thought the alien was a Kardashian. Uh -huh. But now that I've gotten more of the hints, I'm thinking now it's Paula Abdul. Okay. And the reason I think that is because um, there's the hint of snakes and a police badge was just uh -huh. revealed last night. And so th she has that song um, where it's like he's a cold-hearted snake looking into his eyes. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking, okay, there's the snake. Yeah. And she's in like a police costume in that music video. So I'm like, oh, okay, that, now no, I'm really convinced. Sense. And yeah. she's a great dancer. She's a good singer. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember, remember if this is true or not, but when she was on American Idol, I think she would refer to a lot of the girls when she gave them like good feedback as sister. Uh -huh. And she said she had a lot of sisters. Like maybe that's what uh, she means by that. Yeah, there's so much. Like when you watch those Clue videos, like so many little things, I'm like, I know you did that on purpose. What does it mean? <laughs> the other one that's getting me is the monster. I'm now oh, convinced okay. that the monster is, um, I don't know if it's pronounced B-O-B -B or like Bob, mm -hmm. because he's a flat earther. And he said he like got banished, so. Thank you, Rachel. And that concludes our entertainment segment here on The Buzz. I'm Emma Hurley. Be sure to join us again so you can hear what is buzzing here on campus. Thank you. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.